Hi, this is The Gun Guy. Thank you very much for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. As you can tell, I'm out here on the P2K range, again on the training range, and we've been out shooting the Makarov pistol and having a great time doing it. I've always wanted to get my hands on one of these to shoot them. I've held them and picked them up at gun shows and so on, but never got to shoot one until today, and we've been shooting the snot out of it. It's a, it's a terrific little pistol. They shoot really well for a, a Russian design pistol, and I'm not picking on Russian designs, except that a lot of the pistols, the Tokarevs and so on, aren't very comfortable to shoot, but this one fits the hand very nicely. It's got a very nice design, sort of modeled after the PP, uh, the Walther PP series. It's bigger, but a lot of it is the same. And I'll go over some of that with you in just a second so you can see what the similarities and differences are. Uh, it shoots a different cartridge. It shoots a 9 by 18 Makarov. Now that's not the same 9 millimeter that you're used to seeing if you own a Glock or you own something like that. The Makarov 9 by 18 is a shorter cartridge because it's 9 by 18 instead of 9 by 19, which is the 9 millimeter we're used to. We'd call it 9 millimeter or 9 millimeter Parabellum or 9 millimeter. Uh, uh, Luger. Those are all the, the 9 millimeters as Americans we see all the time. The 9 by 18 is a specifically uh, Eastern Bloc cartridge, and you'll notice it's shorter than our 9 millimeter and it's a little fatter, so it will not run in a standard 9 millimeter handgun. It will only run in these. And these guns uh, are, shoot very effectively with that round because they're a, a blowback type action with a fixed barrel. So they really can't have too powerful a round in them. It has to stay pretty much sub nine millimeter Luger um, pressures and cartridge. So the cartridge out of this gun is more powerful than a 380, less powerful than your nine millimeter that you've got uh, in your nine millimeter pistol that you normally would carry or have at home. But it's very effective for defensive purposes. I mean, after all, the Russians uh, used it as the primary military and police sidearm in their country from 1951 to 1991. So that's a 40 year stretch. And if you travel the world, you'll still find that these guns are still issued as standard police sidearms and standard military sidearms in many countries. And it's because they function very reliably, they're reasonably accurate, and they're reasonably powerful, and they have a reputation for getting the job done. So they're really good little guns. Now I have noticed some people wanting to carry them uh, concealed carry, and I'll talk about that uh, when I get back after shooting them after the shooting segment, and why you want to be careful to make sure that the safety is on once the round is decocked. There are a few differences between this pistol and the Walther PP, and you can see them if you look pretty closely. One is the grip angle of the grip. The Walther PP, the grip angle is a little farther back. Another is the uh, a little addition that they did on this pistol, which is the slide stop. So you've actually got a, a manual slide stop on the outside of the pistol. On a Walther PP, you didn't have that. You had to move the slide back with an empty magazine in the gun in order for the slide to stay locked back. And then in order to move it forward, you'd have to take that magazine out or you'd have to put a full magazine in so you could chamber around and pull back on the slide a little bit and let it go. And that would allow you to, to lock the slide in the rear position and release it. But it was all internal, it was not outside manual. This is an improvement on the PP design in the sense that you have this external slide stop. So you can, as you would with any defensive pistol, slide the slide back, and push up on the slide stop and that will lock the slide back whether you have a magazine in the gun or not. So that's a nice little improvement. Now another dis dis difference between this and the PP is where the magazine release is. The magazine here on, on the PP is here where you would normally expect it to be on an American pistol but on this pistol it is a, the more European old design where the magazine release is down here on the bottom of the mag well right by the base of the grip. So that's a little difference. And then the other thing you'll notice about this pistol that's different than a Walther PP is the way the safety works. Because on this gun there is a decocker. You move the safety to the up position and that decocks the pistol and puts the pistol on safe. Now the slide won't move, nothing will function until this is swept down. And once the safety is swept down, then the slide will move and the gun will actually function. A Walther PP, the safety works the other way. Down is safe and up is fire on a Walther PP. This gun is more similar to a 1911 safety where up locks the slide in position and puts the gun on safe and down puts the gun on fire and releases the slide. So if you shoot 1911s, you're gonna be able to function with this gun very well. It'll work for, very beautifully for you. Now in order to take these guns apart, it's a really simple process. 
Uh, you, first, you want to make sure they're empty, which this one is. Uh, we've already cleared it with the mag and everything else. And then you want to lock the slide to the rear. So we'll lock it to the rear with our external slide lock. And then it's simply an exercise of grabbing a hold of the trigger guard and pulling it down and moving it either to the right or left a little bit so that it'll rest on the frame right here or on the other side. And that way it keeps it out of the way. Then you pull back on the slide, lift up, and separate the pistol from the slide. So you have the slide, the slide here, you have the pistol there, and you'll notice on the pistol that the barrel is still attached to the pistol and the spring comes off the front of the barrel. So the barrel on this gun serves two purposes. It's the barrel which is fixed to the frame and cannot be removed, and then it's also the guide rod for the return spring. In order to put the gun back together, you simply take the slide and fit the spring and barrel back in the front of the slide, and then when it's down in this position, push the slide all the way to the rear until it'll get down where it needs to be. You have to wiggle it a little bit to get it in position, and once it's there, pull down on your trigger guard, line it back up again, and let it fall back into position, and now the gun is ready to shoot. How simple is that? So now you can see that this gun is very similar to the Walther, but very different as well. And anyway, I think I've talked enough about it. Let me get out on the range. We're going to shoot it some more for you, and then I'll come back and mention that piece I wanted to tell you, which is the safety issue if you decide to carry one for concealed carry. Holy smoke! Wow, this pistol's a joy to shoot and it's extremely accurate. I mean, pretty much every round is going in a little group that's maybe, I don't know, an inch and a half high or something. Now, this isn't very far. This is about five or six yards, but at defensive distances, beautiful. And the trigger is very manageable. It doesn't matter whether you shoot single action, which is what I was doing, or whether you want to use the decocker and decock the pistol and then shoot double action like this. It's a longer trigger press, but it's not, whoops, gonna take it off safe. It's a longer trigger press, but it's a very smooth one. And then the gun runs beautifully after that. So, I mean, I'm not finding anything that I dislike about these pistols. First time I've ever gotten to shoot one, and it's magnificent. So as you can see, they're just a boatload of fun to shoot. I mean, they really are a lot of fun to shoot. There's not a lot of recoil to them. They're very comfortable. Uh, the grips are very nice on them and so on. So if you happen to get a good one, and uh, the German ones I can tell you are very nice, the Bulgarian ones I've seen are very nice, and even the other ones that are a little rougher shoot really, really well. And like I said, I've got several students that are carrying them for concealed carry and uh, really uh, enjoy having them and carrying them because they're a real good carry pistol and they have a long history of getting the job done as a standard issue sidearm. Now, here's the issue I mentioned before as far as concealed carry is concerned. I've run into a number of students that have said they want to carry the gun with the uh, decocker having decocked the hammer on a live round but the safety off. Now, I want to encourage you not to do that. Get in the habit of drawing the pistol and sweeping off the safety because my understanding is, and please correct me if I'm wrong, as I've said before, I'm a law enforcement and security firearms instructor, but I'm by no means a gunsmith. But I have been told and I have read that the firing pin design in these guns is free floating. There's no firing pin spring, for example. The pin just rests near the primer. So if you drop the gun and the safety is not on, then if the hammer is struck, it might discharge on you, where if the safety is on, it should keep it from doing that and make it safe if you drop it. So, you know, people will say, well, I've never dropped my handgun. Well, let me tell you, it's happened twice to me. Once when I was chasing a bad guy and the snap came loose on my holster and I heard my, my pistol hit the, hit the cement, I was running through a parking lot and I had to go back and get my gun. Another instance, I was chasing a bad guy and I went over a chain link fence and I wore a low slung uh, swivel holster with a big swivel bracket in the middle or a swivel point in the middle. It was nice and shiny nickel like an idiot, and when I went over the fence, it caught on that and the whole lower part of my holster broke off and I found myself on one side of the fence with my gun on the other side of the fence. So it does happen, 
Even when you're trying to, you know, you're not trying to run away, but you're just doing things. Sometimes holsters fail, guns fall out. If that's the case, where you happen to drop it, you want to make sure that the gun is in a safe position so that it doesn't go bang on you. Now, if you happen to know a lot about these and you know more than I do, or you have a gunsmith history and you know more about that, please enlighten us. Uh, you can go right down to the comment section, leave a comment and let us know more about it because I'm just going to admit to you, I'm not 100% sure about that, but I tend to want to be more cautious rather than less. So I would urge you, get into, train with the gun with the safety on, and as you bring the gun out of the holster and bring it into firing position, sweep the safety off. That's what I do with 1911s, and that's what would work really well here. Thank you again for watching my channel. I really, really do appreciate it. Please like, subscribe. I think the button is up here. I think it's up there, unless Nick moved it over there, <laughs> you never know. But it's a big button, so you can't miss it. So please subscribe so we can let you know when new videos are heading your way. We try to do them every week, and we try to knock out at least two. So look for those each week. And if you have not already joined the National Rifle Association, I want to encourage you to do that. If you like shooting and you like guns and you're not a member, you need to be. So I'm going to put a link right here so that you can join. You can do it for less than the cost of one box of ammunition and sign up for a year to add your very valuable voice to the rest of ours. And if you haven't noticed, our gun rights are under attack all the time and the NRA needs your help. And if you happen to be in the San Diego area, please come on by the P2K range. It's a great place to shoot. Look for me. I'm here three, two, three, four days a week, and you can find me here. If you see me, come on over and say hi. I'd love to meet you. Maybe we can shoot together. Once again, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful week, and be safe.